Bloody hell, are we still doing these? It's nearly mid-July. Must be time for the June subscription boxes. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for a very specific one to be delivered, and it never was. So uh, I've got a replacement one now of a different thing. Anyway, let us begin as ever with Crate Luto, or Loot Crate, as it is referred to in some territories. I've actually got two of these now. I've got the July one as well, so I had to be very careful about which one I was opening today to make sure I had the right one. So I opened up and peeked and I was correct. It is a box with Archer stuff on. Look, Archer. It's that cartoon about a spy and it's funny in that. There. I hope that's given you a really good insight into what that program is. Must admit, I've never really seen it. I've seen bits. Seemed very good. Must get around to watching it one day. Anyway, start as we mean to go on with the shirt of tea. It's bright red and it's got Deadpool on. He's coming out of a taco that says, Taco Surprise. Oh, Deadpool. peeko boo he goes. You so crazy and random, Deadpool. Yeah. I don't know. Hard character to get right, I always think. Films do a good job. Not entirely sure this t-shirt has, but I do enjoy the fact it's not black, like 98% of them. What else have we got? A big... <laughs> a big Lebowski. A pin. Sort of slightly retro uh, style one. That's interesting. Um, fair enough. Old, uh, Jeff Bridges doing his thing there. Hmm. And no Loot Crate logo on it. So, uh, yeah. Um, that's a pin you might like. If you like the Big Lebowski, you might like to attach this to something. And now, what is the Archer thing? It is classic Archer figure. Ooh. Oh, hang on. Ah, where's the knife? Ah. Blimey, it's got the cellar tapes on it. Gotcha. Go on the other end as well. Oh, no, I'm not. Right. So I've just dropped the knife. Right. Classic Archer figure. How classic is it? Does it tell a joke? And then everyone goes, oh, that's classic Archer figure. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? That is pretty good. Um, let's have a peek at this. We'll put it on the stand for full uh, compliment. Yep. Shut up. I am drinking. Give me a second. Oh, can you read what it says on this? My god, I think it actually you actually can make that out. Uh, nope, can't quite manage it with my eyes. It's so small. It says Sterling on it. Sterling Archer is the character's name, if I remember, isn't it? That is really nice. See, it's not one of these big-headed nonsense figures or the Funko breadhead pop. It actually looks like the character from the series, and it's in a really good pose, and it's solidly made, and the paint's okay, and it's all... That's one of the nicest things I've seen the Loot Crate for quite some time. If I liked Archer, I would love this to bits. I, mean, I don't dislike Archer, I just have no uh, particular connection to it myself. But I wish I did, so that I could have this on my Archer shelf, which I'm sure I would have. Right, that's good. I like that a lot. What else have we got? Running... <laughs> what? One of those cheap wallets with a banana running on it. I don't know what this is a reference to. Is this like a prop from something? Does it have something inside? There's always money in the banana stand. Oh, shit, son. Arrested development. Yeah, I see. Uh, uh, I wouldn't have got that on its own. Well, it's, it's a wallet. If you like arrested development and wallets, then, frankly, you probably need to uh, take a long, hard look at your hobbies. Oh, I say. What is this? Alter Ego. Sticker is colour printed on clear material. Uh, Punisher logo decal. There we are. You can put the Punisher logo on something and then you, people will see that and say, hey, he likes that TV show. And then you can say, I like the comics as well. And then marriage will ensue. And also a flyer for Deadpool 2 advertising the day that comes out. See, if you'd removed that, you'd said it was a poster. But with that on, it's just kind of an advertising flyer, isn't it? Hmm. Very odd. Right. That's your lot. Bloody hell. Oh. Well, as ever, not that many items in these things these days. They try and give us more high-quality items, I suppose, than the low-quality stuff. But, yeah, you're basically getting your T-shirt and your figure and a, a fairly basic wallet, it must be said. And a sticker and an advert, really. But, uh, gotta say. Mmm. 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 Weird. I just had to fiddle with the uh, white balance on the camera. It's all getting a bit orange by the end of the last segment, which is strange. Anyway, 
I want to share something with you now because God knows YouTube won't. Um, we are crowdfunding a sequel to our 2013 feature film, Ashens and the Quest for the Game Child, and this is called Ashens and the Polybius Heist. Sorry if you have heard about this before. I shall be brief, but I want to try and reach the whole audience, and God knows YouTube won't let me do that with an announcement video. Or in fact, most videos at all, but hey, that's another fish full of kettles. So yes, basically, it's going to be a comedy heist movie. It follows on from the first film, set five years later, which is quite amazing, because that is actually the amount of time that's passed in real life. Ooh, truth in comedy. So yes, we are crowdfunding it on Indiegogo as before. Um, do check links, which will be down in the description. I'll stick one of them card things up here as well. If if you are interested and i tell you what by crikey it's gone pretty well we haven't had it up uh, we've had it up just over five days actually and we're currently at 108 percent of the minimum funding target which is great it means we can make the film which is bloody fantastic but there is very much a minimum so we are pushing towards stretch goals to try and improve the film and get extra bits in it and all that kind of stuff so stretch goals available include things like uh, i'm finally going to eat some sir strumming you know, that horrible, rotten, herring stuff, if we finally reach a certain amount. and uh, Although it does turn out that uh, Big Clive did it recently, so uh, if you are interested in that, see him doing it, and then I might be doing it soon if we reach $85,000. Um, there's all sorts of other things going on. If we reach, like, $120,000, we are going to have an entire day where everybody who backed the film can meet up. We're calling it Tatfest 2019, and it's kind of going to be like an antiques roadshow for gubbins. Ex except with a lot more stand-up comedy, probably. And there's all sorts of other things. We'll add a bit to the film where I'm forced to wear bizarre anime cosplay, although of our own uh, OCs, of course, because, hey, we don't want to get hit by the copyright. Please don't sue us, Mr. Shonen Jump. Um, if so we reach really high amounts, there's things like uh, we'll have a new Chef Engstance Mysteries cartoon, we'll film an alternate ending to the movie, uh, we'll have a car chase sequence, maybe, film a spin-off, and if we reach the absolutely well, frankly, impossible amount of $350,000, which is just crazy, we will literally make a third film and give everybody who uh, backed this second film access to it for free. Because why wouldn't we? Anyway, yeah, if you're interested in it, check out one of the many links. Right, next box then. It is... Ooh, the absolutely massive, amazing mystery box. It's amazing, it's a mystery, and yet... It is also a box. The biggest mystery is, why doesn't that have a capital letter? We may never know, friends. So this is a special one this time. This is full entirely of Star Wars stuff, I am led to believe, which will be interesting. If you've never seen one of these things before, um, you know, like a loot crate is, oh, here's a handful of um, exclusive items. These are basically older items, but shitloads of them. You get a lot of interesting stuff in these. And I'm quite looking forward to the Star Wars one, actually. And already I can see a plush Yoda. <laughs> oh man, he's a, he's a slightly off colour, I've got to say, and, and the face is more grotesque than the actual Yoda. Oh, it looks like he's been eating string. Look, I approve of the hair. I like the fuzzy hair. The rest of it, I'm not sure. It's just giant feet he's got going on in hands. Oh my god, I talk. Exprick. For 800 years have I trained Jedi. Bully for you, mate. When 900 years old, you reach for this good Yoda not. Yeah, but it's more that you're sort of a weird-looking soft toy. A lot of stitching on the old brain there. Probably had surgery on it. Um, and my god, an entire booklet of gubbins. Look, we could have had a Darth Vader, First Order Stormtrooper, BB-8, Rey, Kylo Ren, Chewbacca, R2-D2, Constable Zuvio, Lobot, all your favourites. Um, yeah, I mean, it's well made in that, but I, I don't like the design, personally. Yeah, that's annoying now. I said, that's annoying. Enough about you, you muppet. Right, over there, what else we got? Oh, the t-shirt, there's always a t-shirt. I believe if you use the um, voucher that I've put in the description for the old uh, box here, you get two t-shirts as opposed to one. So that's something, isn't it? Ooh. Ooh. I reckon it's a lightsaber. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh. Dun, 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 dun. May the force be with you. Oh, that's a nice sentiment. Yep, it's a lightsaber, I believe. Well, based pretty much on the one Luke is holding aloft in the famous poster for the first Star Wars film. In fact, that's what this may be taken from. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, that's rather nice. I like it. Well done. Next up, <gasps> Star Wars Micro Machines! <gasps> it could be an X-Wing fighter, or a TIE fighter, or that's the uh, 
Is that the Phantom from Star Wars Rebels? I believe it is. Right, let's open up and find out. I'm not generally a fan of micro machines as a thing. I always used to like the ones with little cars, with little wheels and things. Back in the day, but uh, these days. Not so exciting. This this is odd. Well, Stars is. It, it has a hole for a stand, but doesn't come with a stand, so that's irritating. But it's a gold Jedi Starfighter. I couldn't tell you which one, because obviously I can't see the colouration of it, because it's all been painted gold. Does that mean it's ultra rare? Does that mean I can now retire after selling this on eBay? I'm going to guess the answer to all those questions are no, but, uh, well, that's that's interesting, isn't it? Quite a nice detail on it. I'd like to see it painted properly, actually. Never mind. Ooh, more spaceships! Ah, oh, Millennium Falcon! From the new film, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Three different Millennium Falcons now, aren't there? This is the one with the square scanner thing on it, so they can pick up satellite TV. Includes Flight Navigator. But what is a Flight Navigator? Is that is that the stand? I'm confused with this. Anyway, die-cast metal. Uh, they were selling uh, these in Poundland, not specifically the Millennium Falcon, though. I think that one's too big. They only had, like, the smaller ones. I bought from there a First Order Special Forces TIE Fighter. They definitely had that. I saw some X-Wings, didn't see any standard TIE Fighters, and didn't see any Jedi Starfighters, and certainly didn't see any Millennium Falcons. But hey, it's all interesting. Whoa. Oh no, my flight navigator. How will I navigate my flights now? Yep, that's a slab of metal in the shape of the Millennium Falcon, if ever there was one. So I put that in there. And there you go. Oh, wow. It's like a Ring Raider, which is one of the most rude names for a toy you can imagine. It's just occurred to me. But they were like, um, well, aircraft, basically, weren't they? That attached little rings you put on your finger. <laughs> That sounds a bit like Chewbacca. Hmm. Right, I'm going to have to hone that impression over the next few months. Anyway, that's quite nice, isn't it? You can't complain with a metal model of the Millennium Falcon. My grandmother always said it, and she was never wrong on that. Next up, some proper bloody Star Wars action figures from The Force Awakens. Look, BB-8. I don't think I have a BB-8 in that scale. Now I do. Unkar's Thug, everyone's favourite. That means he works for the Simon Pegg character. And Jakku Scavenger. So basically, we've got Guy who's eaten a harmonica and a steampunk mummy. Fair enough. And also some giant rocket firing shit that nobody wants. Um, oh, sorry. Firing net. Go on. Let's open her up then. Well, I don't have either of these figures because, uh, frankly, they appear on screen for like 0.4 of a femtosecond, don't they? But still longer than Constable Zuvio, who, as we've said before, didn't appear on camera at all. Ooh, look at that. It's all a little bit dark. Uh, looking through the viewfinder now, it seems to have turned off the auto white balance since I told it to stop going orange. Well, that's annoying, isn't it? Um, yeah, as ever, these were really, always the most really well sculpted figures, you know. Can't complain with that. Uh, this guy. <laughs> I like the way he's made his own sandals out of bits of crisp bread or something. Yep, well, that's him, isn't it? Was he the one on the, uh, like, robotic horse thing at the start who tries to steal BB 8? Ah, it must be. That's why he comes with BB-8 and a net. Oh, you see, it's all making sense now. Go on then, let's fire it out of this so it goes behind the sofa and is never found again. Pop that in there. Click. Pop that in there. Click. There we are. Pew, 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 pew. Rubbish. What's BB-8 like? No, it's not great, actually. It's not up to the standard of the others. The head moves around a little bit and... Yeah. All right, not awful. But, uh, yeah. The proof of the pudding is in these figures, my friends. They are quite nice. If you should want them, maybe there are other ones available in different boxes. I don't know. I've only got this box. That's how that works. Also, ooh, BB-8 Mini Light. Oh my god! Try me! How? Alright, move that for the batteries. Oh, there we are. Push on the top, and it glows. A light roughly in the shape of BB-8. Oh, there we are. I'd actually tell you, remove isolation tab. That sounds like a torture method or something. Put him in the isolation tab. Um, well, that's a, a night light to amuse the children and stop them being terrified that they're going to be eaten by Unkar Plutt in the middle of the night. Because, hey, I know that is a worry for kids everywhere. That's quite a nice little thing, isn't it? And finally... I don't know why I said and finally. There could have been something else, actually. No, this is... I was correct. And finally... I don't know what the hell this is. A towel or something? Oh god, I can't work out how to open it. That's a bad start. Right, I've got I've got one end. Bear with us, folks. We shall get there. 
Um, it is a towel. Bloody hell. Hang on. It's like a massive beach towel. Ha! Right. It is the scroll text from the start. It says, A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, was a naked person who has just come out of a shower and wrapped themselves in this. So there's an image for you. Um, wow. That's nice. I do like a towel. It's very, very soft. Very soft one side. The other side is uh, not so soft. You can exfoliate with that one. No, it's not that rough. Hmm. Well, I never complain at a towel. Is, is my new catchphrase. Look out for that one being used in the future. Well, as ever, that was an interesting box of stuff, absolutely chock full of uh, bits and bobs, all of which would have had a very high RRP. Of that, I approve. Can't approve of the face on that, though. Bladdy hell. What do you say, Yoda? The Jedi use the Force. Yeah, well, of course he does. Yeah, I feel like that's a partial sentence. Are you going to finish that for us? Judge me by my size, do you? I'll judge you by how strongly you bounce off the wall when I throw you at it. I judge you harshly. And finally, back to our old friends of treats. They send you treats through the post. You eat them with your face. Not really much else to worry about there. Actually, might want to open the packets before you try the treats. Little uh, professional tip for you there. So, what is... Oh, piffle and bums. <laughs> I haven't forgotten to undo the sellotape on this. Ah, and I dropped the knife earlier. Ah, oh, well, amuse yourselves while this is going on. <laughs> Try thinking of a cat that talks, right, but it only tells weird jokes. See? A little bit of a mental exercise for you there. Right. bum ba da bum da bum It is... Is that a flag of the country this has come from? I don't know. And I can't seem to remove it, so now we never will. Ooh, from Colombia, possibly. Yes, that is the Colombian flag, apparently. This is Monserrati, Bogota in Colombia. Well, that's a waste of space, isn't it? I mean, you want to try putting some buildings on that. <coughs> Bloody hell. That's a lot of people. Hola from Colombia. Buen provecho. This month's treats come to you from the tropical lands of Colombia. Yep, rock that bit out. Hmm, I don't know if you've noticed at home, but uh, that bit of uh, paper there is really quivering. I don't know why. Oh, it's because of all the pressure I'm putting on this bit of the sofa. Look at this, right? Put pressure on this part of the sofa. Ooh. It all starts to quiver. Does that mean my arm is quivering when I push down? Ooh, it's into it. No, I forget it. Let's just look at some treats. <clears throat> Explore Colombia with treats. Colombia facts. I seem to remember something about they produce a lot of the world's drugs, but I'll bet they don't mention that because I very much doubt they're going to send you those in a box. I like these people's hats. I approve. Right, what's an. Oh, no, don't spoil it. We're going to go through and. Oh, good God. That, that's one of them, isn't it? <laughs> oh, sorry. <clears throat> Let me correct that. That's two of them. Right, now I am intrigued. Well, let's start off with these then. These are apparently Ojitos by El Gran Cactus Valeno. Um, Ojitos by El Gran Cactus Valeno are unique traditional guava paste and milk caramel snacks local to Colombia. Made with guava from Colombia. Well, I'm trying to guess that bit. All right, I'm intrigued by this. Yeah, they look quite sugary. I'm going to give it a bit of a bit of a bite. Um, oh, very crumbly. Yep. Oh, that's guavery. That is basically sugar and fruit in that. But I'm going to try getting some in the middle. Um. Oh, yeah. Middle is quite caramelly, as they describe. These are quite nice. They're very, very fruity for a snack. Hmm, good start. Right, let's start jump cutting quite quickly. Akiras or Achiras? Not sure. Del Huila. From Calada da Tradicion. Calada. Delgadath. Calada. I can't remember to pronounce that. Well, the important thing is these are cheese biscuits, and apparently they're gluten free, so there's the thing. They look quite biscuity. Ooh, they're quite hard. Um, they're quite subtle, actually. Not overly cheesy. Hmm. A little bit more as you chew onto them. Yeah, I quite like those. Those are good. That gets the thumb up seal of approval. Fnarp. And now, from those morally challenged people at Nestle, it is Cocosetti. Or Cocoset, maybe. S tastes of cocoa. Or something. Cocoa. Uh, hang on, let me read the description. Cocosets are chocolate covered and coconut flavoured wafers. Oh, I hate coconut. This is going to be great. Right, let's see if I can open it. And. Yeah, it's just going to be a wafer full of coconut in it. Oh, God. Well, ugh. Ugh. 
bloody coconut. Actually, that's my review of these. Bloody coconut. This is more like it. Jet milk chocolate. Apparently the most popular chocolate in Colombia. A little bit funny, a little bit of heat bloom going on, which is where things get, uh, chocolate gets a bit warm when the sugar comes to the surface. Mm. Oh, yeah. And that is a decent chocolate. Um, tastes different to the milk chocolate we have locally, but it's good. It's not like um, Poundland Advent Calendar chocolate or something. That is uh, pretty good stuff. You yeah, can see why that's popular. A spooky unmarked treat. Um, although I worked out from the piece of paper that these are panelitas de Arequipe or something. Traditional milk caramel and coconut candies made from fresh coconuts. Great. Yep. Well, the good news is the coconut's relatively subtle, but still manages to ruin the milk caramel and stick in your teeth. Damn you, coconut! Chocoramo by Ramo. The, the, I can see where they got the name from. This is basically a chocolate cake, apparently. It seems fairly straightforward. Um, according to the thing, it's using traditional baking methods dating back to 1950. Well, 60 years, is, is that really traditional? I mean, traditional normally you're thinking dating back hundreds of years or something. Yep, that's a cake. Got that slightly mm, preservative sort of tang that uh, cakes that have, you know, been preserved kind of taste off. It's not unpleasant though, it's actually one of the better ones I've had of this type. Mm. Yeah, that's getting cake points. That is definitely getting cake points. Super cocoa, the taste of a lot of cocoa, I think that says. Right, this is apparently a uh, one of Colombia's most famous candies, derived from 100% natural ingredients. They are coconut. Why has everything got pissing coconut in it? Ugh. It's really crunchy. Yeah, I feel like sticking them with teeth. It's got that kind of molasses type taste to it. And um, oh, yeah, it's kind of a coconut, you know. An excellent treat. What's up with the white balance today? That's better. An excellent treat for coconut lovers. Yeah, great. Brilliant. It's going to be oh, oh, I'm physically choking on it. It's getting brilliant. There's shards of it going down my throat. And it's going to be stuck in my teeth for a week. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Thanks, coconut. The girl. So, um, bestitos de casito. Cheese snacks. Real cheese. Baked, not fried. They look very, very spherical. But how do they taste? Oh, good, they look inflated. They're mostly hollow inside. Um, I can't taste anything, but I can't tell if that's because my mouth is still stuck up from this damn super cocoa thing. Um, I'm going to try another one. Ooh. Ooh, no, these aren't great. Oh, they've got that kind of slightly... Very faint cheese flavour, but it's one of the sort of cheeses that tastes a bit gone off. Mm. Oh, that's a bit unpleasant. I feel like I'm eating the eggs of some alien, and the eggs are slightly rancid. Oh, that's not good. Oh, stay behind the box. Take the taste away with Piazza vanilla flavour. Well, I think we can guess what these are. These are wafery things that you shove in your gob like. I can work that one out. Vanilla flavoured, I'm guessing. Oh. Mm. Very artificial vanilla flavour. Got a hint of like mid 80s vanilla ice cream. Yeah. Actually, that's a bit unfair. They are slightly better than that. Yeah, they're alright. They are alright. Did I mention they're alright? Golpe con todo. What does that mean? Golpe with everything or something? From UP, we've got a logo a bit like Amazon. Um, so these are crisps, I'm presuming. Original crisps. So I'm guessing that these cool and very, very, very red-tinted kids are doing is going, hey, we've got some ready salted crisps in a massive bag. Ooh. Oh, God. They really are everything by the looks of it. <laughs> so you've got these things. Oh, bacon flavour. Okay. I was expecting when it said um, original, just to be really sold. A lot more standard crisp, a bit ruffled. 
Again, bacon flavour, I feel. Is there a third one? Hmm. It said something about there being a third type on the thing, but I can only find two, which is odd. Ah. Yeah, they're quite good. Oh, hang on. I found the other one. The rare crisp. Is that potato? Yes. But very different texture, not as crunchy as normal crisps. Interesting. A veritable feast of textures. And all bacon flavoured. Yeah. They're interesting. I like those a lot. And finally, strawberry frunas. Being advertised by an orange, you hat backwards wearing liar. Right, these are chewy sweets, I'm guessing, with the taste of the strawberry. Hmm. Yep, they are exactly as you'd expect. And when they say strawberry, they mean that kind of artificial strawberry taste that everything has, and not actual strawberries. But yeah, they're pleasant enough. Well, that's all the boxes for this month, guys. Before you go, do have a look at um, our crowdfunding campaign for our second film, Ashens and the Polybius Heist. Yoda didn't really say that. This is what Yoda says. Yeah, you're still fucking it up, aren't you? Subscribe for more.